what's the connection between sugar and cancer? Well, it's been nearly a dozen years that we have been here in the same location, here in Tempe, Arizona, the Nature Works Best Cancer Clinic, with me, Dr. Colleen Huber, naturopathic medical doctor and naturopathic oncologist, here today, May 18, 2018, to tell you about the sugar cancer connection. In 2014, our clinic did the largest and longest study in medical history on sugar intake in cancer patients, and we still hold the record till the present. Let me tell you about what we found. Cancer patients who avoided sweetened foods had more than twice the survival of those who consumed sweetened foods. Of those who had our IV nutrient treatments for cancer and avoided sweetened foods, 90% went into remission. That's 90%. Of those who had our IV nutrient treatments and continued eating sweetened foods, only 36% went into remission. That's 90% versus 36%. Sweeteners were the most decisive factor. This study can be found on our website, natureworksbest.com. Now, how do I define sweetened foods? Well, from 2006 on, I asked my cancer patients to please avoid desserts, sweets, sodas, and candy, as well as fruit juice and alcohol. Many cancer patients came in with a daily habit of eating several fruits. I also discouraged this, especially extra sweet fruits. I also discouraged juicing because of the speed of the entry of sugar to the bloodstream. Please, eat a salad instead of juicing. What happens when a cancer patient eats sugar? Well, we see what goes on from this slide showing a PET CT. Now, a PET CT is an ingenious kind of imaging and is the standard imaging used in oncology for this reason, because the precision of the CT image is overlaid with the cancer detection that a PET scan does best. The PET by itself is a fuzzy image, but a very true one, because it shows us where the sugar goes. It goes to the cancer. However, the CT overlay is very helpful also, because it helps us to see outlines of organs more clearly, and the CT accurately shows tumor sizes. Now let's take a look at this PET showing tumors in the liver. Look at the stark contrast between the cancerous tissue and non-cancerous tissue. An amazing contrast. Isn't that something how different the two types of tissue look? See the dark area here where the injected sugar? By the way, in a pet, you do get injected with a form of sugar. Anyway, you can see the dark area here where the injected sugar shows the cancer as being quite different from the light area, which is the normal tissue. People wonder why I get so excited about this. They tell me, my oncologist didn't even mention this. He didn't even tell me how the PET scan works, and he did not warn me that sugar feeds cancer. In fact, there is a huge candy bowl in his chemotherapy room. The reason this matters so very much is this. The body builds a tumor out of your own cells, not an outside invader like bacteria or a virus or a fungus. The body builds a tumor that is very much a part of us. Well, this makes my job as a naturopathic oncologist very difficult. People ask me, can you get rid of my cancer with your IV nutrients? That's like asking me to get rid of your left arm without hurting your right arm with an IV. Impossible, right? Except for this. Right here, where you see this dramatic contrast, this is what I can use to separate out cancer from non-cancer. This is where your cancerous tissue becomes distinct and apart from your normal tissue. Only here, where the sugar goes one way and not so much the other. And that's why I get so excited, because of the nearly impossible task of extracting cancer out of the body without cutting it out or burning it out, here alone I have some hope of eliminating that cancer, or at least making it metabolically inactive, or at least having it begin to go through a natural cell death, apoptosis we call it, to act like normal cells. This is my only hope, really, given the fact that I pledge to first do no harm, and so I am not allowed to, and, well... I refuse to poison you. At least I can take advantage of this crucial difference between normal and cancerous tissue, and by jumping through that little window, I have my best opportunity to get your cancer into remission. Those of you who have seen our research and our documented studies, and for sure those of you who have been to our clinic, know of the many cancer survivors whom we've gotten into remission without toxic treatments. So it works, but the diet must be diligent. Also, I don't know how to get cancer into remission with good diet alone. The IV nutrients are also necessary, in my opinion. Exercise is also necessary. For those who refuse to exercise, they should get hyperbaric oxygen treatments because if this natural treatment is going to work, we are going to have to increase oxygen in the body. 
I discuss all of this more in my book, Manifesto for a Cancer Patient. This book can be purchased on Amazon. Now, I want to talk to you about a little bit of history here. There was a great scientist of the last century, one who does not get nearly enough credit. And that is because his discovery that sugar feeds cancer, oh yes, this has been known for almost a hundred years, is not such a convenient fact for a certain industry. The scientist's name was Otto Warburg, the world's leading biochemist of his time, and Nobel Prize winner, who first made this discovery that cancer can hardly survive at all in a low sugar environment, and that cancer grows very aggressively in a high sugar environment. But cancer has become an enormous industry. Chemotherapy costs a lot of money, and that financial influence is the dominant one that never shines the proper light on the science behind cancer metabolism. This is a crucial reason that very unfortunately, those of you seeing this video are probably hearing about the sugar cancer connection for the first time. This is a real problem. Every kid grows up knowing that smoking is bad for the lungs. We know that pregnant women should not drink alcohol because it's bad for the baby. We all know this. It's common knowledge. Why aren't we also told that sugar feeds cancer? Well, it does. And in my next video, if you can stay awake for it, I can get into some of the wonky science, the biochemistry showing just how that happens. I'm Dr. Colleen Huber. It's May 18, 2018, and thanks for watching.